remind you of where we were last week, and then uh, we'll look a little closer at the book of Daniel, and uh, certainly spark your interest to look a little closer at some of the details in the book of Daniel. We had uh, a thing on Wednesday where we closed Wednesday class where I gave them, uh, uh, I forget what I called it. Anyhow, it was, uh, it was, uh, it just pure speculation. It wasn't biblical at all, (laughs) Uh, but it was intriguing to me, just the possibility of some numbers and how they come together. Uh, But that was Wednesday. These numbers are going to be biblical, and uh, and so they're worth more attention than what we ended Wednesday class on. But uh, we're in Mark 13, and we're learning about the last days, and the question that the apostles had asked, and actually it's Peter, James, John, and Andrew who asked, uh, is in verse 4. They said they asked the Lord, and he just told them the temple was going to be destroyed. So they said, tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign when all these things shall be fulfilled? Now, when, they, when shall these things be? So that has to do with the destruction of the temple. But then it says, all these things be fulfilled. And it's really a reference to the fulfillment of prophecy. It's more than just the destruction of the temple. When you read it in the book of Matthew, it says, what will be the sign of thy coming in the end of the world? So the sign that they're asking for in verse 4 is... The sign about when it's going to be fulfilled is, when is the sign that all prophecy is going to be fulfilled and the end of the world comes? And, uh, but they, it's a twofold question there. And so he begins to tell them, and at first he says, he says some things, and he said, but the end's not yet. Then he tells them some more things, and he said, now this is the beginning of sorrows. Then we came to verse 14, and allow me to read 14 through um, <clears throat> 19 probably. <clears throat> And we were looking at this important statement because the, he pulls something out of prophecy that he expects everybody to understand. And so we challenged you about understanding it last week. It says, But when ye shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing where it ought not, let him that, uh, that readeth understand, and let him that be in Judea flee into the mountains, and let him that is in the housetop not go down into the house, neither enter therein to take anything out of his house. Um, and let him that is in the field not return back again to take any take up his garment, but woe unto them that are with child and them that give suck in those days, and pray that your flight be not in winter, for in those days shall be affliction such as was not from the beginning of creation, which God created unto this time, neither shall be. You talk about right division, there's three, three times in there, in that verse 19. Since the time of creation never has been, and then it says, unto this time there's the present, and which neither shall be, there's the future. And that's not, the present isn't the age of grace here, but the present is when the Lord is with them. So anyhow, there's great affliction that's coming, and there, it's all singled, uh, uh, it's all distinguished, uh, not singled out, <laughs> but anyhow, that is where the sign of when all these, the great affliction is going to take place is in verse 14. When ye shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet. Now, we saw last week, just looking at that, we've already saw about the desolation, uh, that both the city and the sanctuary, the temple, is going to be destroyed. And that's the question they asked him. When are these things going to take place? He told them the temple would be destroyed. And when they see the abomination, it's going to bring the desolation, the, the destruction of the city and the temple. Uh, we also saw that when it says abomination, that abomination, one of the abominations that the Bible points out back when God first let Israel out of Egypt is that bowing down to any graven image is an abomination to God. And so there's an abomination that's going to bring a desolation. And there's going to be, as we know, we looked already in the book of Revelation. Let let me show you two passages we looked at so we can move ahead. Look at first Luke chapter 21. Because Luke almost says things differently. Mark and, and Matthew say it real close to the same. Luke doesn't even mention the abomination of desolation. But he talks about the same time period and gives you some other pieces of information to add to that. Luke 21, in verse 20, it says, 
And when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Now, not only will this tell you that that's the city is going to get destroyed as well as the temple, but, but when they're going to see Jerusalem compassed with armies, when will that be? Well, it's, you already see the desolation coming, so it seems to mark about the same time period called the abomination of desolation. But follow on, it says in verse 21, Then let them which are in Judea flee into the mountains, let them that are in the midst thereof uh, depart out and let not them which are in the countries enter therein too. So you got the same instructions. So it's the same time period. Notice what this time period begins. For these be the days of vengeance that all things which are written may be fulfilled. <laughs> God's going to take vengeance on this world. Woe to them that, you know, especially if the abomination is bowing down to an idol. <laughs> And, uh, and that's an abomination to God. That's the vengeance that he's going to execute. It says, But woe unto them that are with child, to them that give suck in those days. For there shall be great distress in the land, and wrath upon this people. And they shall fall by the sword, by the edge of the sword, and shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down, now catch that phrase, trodden down of the Gentiles, until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. So that Jerusalem is going to be overrun with Gentiles, because there's going to be a destruction of their city. Israel's going to be fleeing. Any Jews who stay are going to just be caught up with the Antichrist and his system. And uh, so the times of the Gentiles, this will, it'll, it'll conclude the times in which Gentiles rule over Israel. It'll, the, the things that happen after that is the second coming of Christ. And then he gathers Israel back and, and fulfills his promises to them. So I want you to see those details. Again, go to Revelation chapter... Uh, 12 first. <clears throat> now in the book of Revelation, not only should you know a little bit about some of these events, but the most ba basic events are right here in chapters 12 and 13. Because they mark off that, that real important time called the abomination of desolation. And there's some events that take place here that, uh, that I want you to be aware of. Uh, without getting into all the symbolism and all, Verse 6 says of chapter 12, And the woman fled into the wilderness where she had a place prepared of God that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and threescore days. Now, I already put in the, the, the book of Revelation, and we already have the reference where we'll be going to Daniel, but in Daniel, where it does talk about the abomination of desolation, Daniel speaks about a time period in which 69 weeks God will deal with Israel until Jesus Christ dies on the cross. And then after that, there'll be the 70th week, and then that brings everlasting righteousness and Jesus Christ is anointed king. So there's this time in the book of Daniel called the 70th week of Daniel. But when we study that, we realize that a week equals seven years. And so there's 69 weeks of years, and then you come to that 70th week, well, that's one week. And so the time period is seven years of, of the last, God's last dealings with Israel. God will deal again with Israel after the age of grace, and there'll be seven years left on the prophetic clock. Now, so without trying to teach all that, the reason I'm saying that is... When Israel has to flee in the wilderness, it tells you that she flees there a thousand two hundred and three score days. One thousand two hundred and sixty days. That something takes place and then she flees into the wilderness that long. So that's actually a half of the seven, uh, a half of the seven years. In fact, if you look over in verse 13, and by the way, in verses 7 and following, Satan is thrown out of heaven. When you come to chapter 13, all of a sudden a beast rises up and he takes political control. And chapter 13 is where they make an image to the beast and everybody in the world has to worship the beast. There's the abomination. That's where the number 666 is at chapter 13, verse 18. So I, I want you to know those details. We're not studying them. But in verse 13 of chapter 12, it says, And the dragon, that's Satan, who's now cast down to the earth, in fact, Verse 12, let me read that verse to you. Therefore rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. For the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth he hath but a short time. 
And in his wrath, look what he does. And when the dragon saw that he was cast to the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle. In case I never have a chance to say this again, I always think of they're going to jump a Boeing 747 and get out of town. Uh, yeah, I, could that, that could be literal, huh? But anyhow, they were given wings of a great eagle that they might fly into the wilderness unto her place where she is nourished. Now, this time it don't say a thousand, two hundred, three score days. It says she's nourished for a time and times. That's twice now. There's, that, that's plural the second time. And a half a time from the face of the serpent. Time would be like one year. Times, now that's, that's got to be more than one because it's plural, so that's two. So it's one year and then two years and then a half a time. Well, how much is that? Three and a half years. Now, one of the things is in Bible prophecy, going all the way back, even to the days of Noah, when, when, when Noah's on the ark and God's telling you how long they're in the ark, when you do the calculations, there's 100, well, there's, there's um, you got to double it. Anyhow, there's 360 days in a year even, not 365 like in our, in our time. There's 360 days in a prophetic year, and that's how, if you divide that 1,260 by 360, you come out exactly three and a half years. Now, I could tell you that, or I could prove it to you. Look over in Revelation chapter 11. It says in verse 1, And there was given to me a reed, like unto a rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple and the altar, and them that worship therein. But the court, which is without the temple, leave out, and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall be trodden underfoot. Well, we know about that, don't we? That's what Luke said was going to happen. They're going to be trodden underfoot how long? Forty-two months. How long is 42 months? Divide that by 12. Three and a half years. Look at the next verse. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred threescore days. One thousand two hundred sixty days. That three and a half years is one thousand two hundred sixty days. So you got that time period there. Now, our study in Mark is saying when you see that abomination, that you have to understand what that is because there's no time to think, no time to go read your Bible. You got to get out of town as fast as you can. So it looks like the abomination is when Satan is cast down and then there's an image set up for him in the temple to be worshipped. And when you see that take place, the abomination, it's going to bring the desolation. You don't want to be there when the city and the sanctuary is desolated. You've got to get out of town. So that's when they're told to flee. Now let's find out when exactly that is in, in other places since it said the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet. So far in our study, we've studied everything but Daniel the prophet. So let's go to Daniel chapter 8. Sherry, can you see okay over there? Okay. Because I'm going to do some writing here. Now, Daniel chapter 8, I'm not going to, just like Revelation, I'm not going to get into all the symbolism and teach you the book. But you'll catch on to what these events are. It says in verse 9, now this is Daniel, he's in the middle, he's at the end of seeing a vision. And he says, and out of one of them came forth a little horn. So he saw other horns, but out of one of them came a little horn, which waxed exceeding great toward the south and toward the east and toward the pleasant land. I take that to be the nation of Israel, the land of Israel. It says, and it waxed great even to the host of heaven. And it cast some of the host and of the stars to the ground and stamped upon them. Now, this is a powerful being, isn't it? If he can take some of the host of heaven, the stars of heaven, the angelic beings, and defeat them. Verse 11 says, And he magnified himself even unto the prince of the host, which I would believe is Michael the archangel. It says, And by him the daily sacrifice was taken away. And the place of his sanctuary was cast down. Now, apparently, that, that sanctuary that's going to be destroyed, in that verse it says it's his sanctuary. 
See, that's, it's, this is not God's temple. This is Satan's temple. And he's going to even replace his temple by stopping the daily sacrifice and tear it all down. There's going to be a destruction of that sanctuary. Verse 12 says, And a host shall be given unto him, that's like a military force, shall be given unto him against the daily sacrifice by reason of transgression. So there's going to be a transgression that's going to cause the sacrificing to cease, and it shall, it shall cast the truth to the ground and practice and prosper. Now we always talk about doctors practicing medicine, which is probably a pretty good term. <laughs> but think about it in a negative way. How about those who practice witchcraft? That, that is, they're executing a, a diabolical plan. That's what it means to practice. This guy, he's... He, He's practicing and he's prospering. He's winning. So, and, and he's casting the truth to the ground. The very fact he has a sanctuary, he's already cast the truth of Hebrews to the ground. And then the truth about not worshiping any graven image, he's going to cast that to the ground. Verse 13 says, And I heard one of the saints speaking, and another saint said unto that certain saint which spake, How long shall be the vision concerning the daily sacrifice now catch this phrase, and the transgression of desolation to give both the sanctuary and the host to be trodden underfoot. Ah, we know how long something's going to be trodden underfoot, don't we? 42 months. But watch this one. It says, and he said unto, he said unto me, uh, 2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. Hmm. So, Anyhow, first of all, more basically, notice it doesn't say transgression of desolation. It says it doesn't say abomination of desolation. It calls it a transgression of desolation. That abomination is a transgression of the law, and we'll, we'll I think we already understand what that is. But it, I just point out it's called the transgression of desolation. It's going to bring a desolation. So the angel asked there, how long? And the answer is two thousand three hundred days, right? Well, watch this. If the second coming of Christ is when all that's going to be cleansed, there's a period that goes out that's called 2,300 days. Now, what is that period except that we know that up till that 42-month period, up to where that abomination is going to set, be set up, there's actually... I shouldn't have put the 22 on. Here, I'll put it here. If we go backwards in time, from the time Jesus Christ returns, going backwards into the 70th week, there's 1,260 days here, right? Right to the middle? But this is 2,300 days. How many more days is that? Come on, do the math. What? 1,040, right? Uh, ah. <laughs> that, now you know why I write before I talk. <laughs> I can't write and talk at the same time. These two, there's, if you go back if from the second coming of Christ backwards to go 2,300 days, that means you're going... 1,040 days prior to the center of the tribulation. In fact, that means from the beginning of the tribulation, there's only 220 days. And what I think that that's telling you in that verse, the question, I heard, verse 13, one of the saints speaking, and another saint said unto me, unto that certain saint which spake unto me, how long shall be the vision concerning the daily sacrifice? Now we know he's going to cause this daily sacrifice to cease, Right? When does it start? I think the angel is telling him, until the sanctuary is cleansed, until there's a cleansing, 2,300 days is how long the daily sacrifice is set up, until there's a cleansing. So that would tell me that 220 days into the tribulation is when sacrifice begins.
Now that, that these numbers are tricky, and, and you know you have to deal with the numbers. And anyhow, we're studying the abomination. This is a side deal. So you got that. You got that. Come over to chapter nine now. Oh wait a minute. There's a couple things in chapter eight yet. I got to get out. Um, down in verse fifteen, it says, "And it, and, it, and it came to pass when I, even I, Daniel, had seen the vision." And sought for the meaning, then behold, there stood before me the appearance of a man, and I heard the the voice, wait a minute, that's not what I want. I just went over this this morning, why was I looking at that? Okay, drop down to verse 23. It says, in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgression has come to a full, a king of fierce continence and understanding dark sentence shall stand up, and in his power shall be, uh, uh, in, in his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power, and he shall destroy wonderfully, and shall prosper and practice, and shall destroy the mighty and holy people, and through his policy also he shall cause craft to prosper, and uh, I guess I've got to finish that, uh, In his hand, and he shall magnify himself in his heart, and by peace shall he destroy many. He shall also stand against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken without hand. The prince of princes, he's going to stand up against Jesus Christ, and that's the end for him. One of what the reason I read that section is about him magnifying himself in his heart. Come over to chapter nine. Now here is where Daniel teaches the seventieth seventy weeks. I'm going to break into verse 26. He's already talked about, in verse 25, he's talking about seven weeks. Then there's 62 weeks. You add that together. That's the end of 79, uh, that's the end of 69 weeks. It says in verse 26 of Daniel 9, And after threescore and two weeks shall the Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people, the prince that shall come, shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. There's that destruction of the city and the sanctuary. And the end thereof shall be with a flood. And unto the end of war, desolations are determined. Well, there's abomination of desolation again. Verse 27, And he, the prince that's going to come after they reject Jesus Christ, the prince, uh, he, he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abomination, he shall make it desolate even unto the consummation. And that determined shall be poured out on the desolate. So in the middle of that week, in that seven year period of time, right in the middle, right in three and a half years, is when he sets up this abomination that's going to bring the desolation. That's what, when they see that happen, that is him setting up his image in the temple and ordering people to worship it. Now that's that's the passage we could have just went to and studied only that. Because that tells you that when they see that, that's when it's time to get out and so forth. But there's more detail. Come over to chapter 11. I got to get this done today. If we have to hold up church, we will. (laughs) Uh, Look at verse 29. Again, we're not going to teach all that. This is a, a full chapter here. But anyhow, verse 29 says, And at the time appointed, he shall return... And come toward the south, but he shall, but it shall not be as the former or in the latter. And the ships of Shittim shall come against him. Therefore, he shall be grieved and return and have indignation against the holy covenant. That is, God's covenant with Israel. He's going to work against that. God's going to save Israel, set up his kingdom. He's going to work against that. So shall he do and shall even return and have intelligence with, with them that forsake the covenant. That is, the Jews who don't believe in, that Jesus is the Christ. They're going to help him. They're going to turn against their own people. And the arms shall stand up on his part, and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength, and shall take away the daily sacrifice, and they shall place the abomination that maketh desolate. And such shall they do such as do wickedly against the covenant shall corrupt shall he corrupt by flatteries, but the people that know their God shall be strong and do exploits. So there you got the abomination set up again, right? We understand where we're at in, in the study of Daniel. Drop down to verse uh, 36. It says, And the king shall do according to his will, and he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every god. Now this tells you, this man, this political guy, now he wants to be worshipped like God. And shall speak marvelous things against the God of gods, the true God. 
and shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished, and that it, that is determined shall be done. So God's going to let him do that for three and a half years, claim himself to be God in this world and, and prosper. Verse 12, chapter 12, verse 1 says, And at the time of the end, uh, and at that time shall Michael stand up uh, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people, and he shall be, uh, and there shall be a time of trouble such as was never since there was a nation, even to this same time, and at that time shall the people be delivered, every one that is found written in the book. That is the book of life. So there's that time of trouble like never has been. So you see where the abomination of desolation is. You see the, the movements of the Antichrist here. One more time period to study. Daniel chapter 12, Daniel is being told that this, the book of Daniel is sealed till the end time. Meaning, Daniel, don't expect that you're going to understand this. At the end time, they'll understand it all. But it's a book that, that's going to outlive Daniel. So Daniel's told not to worry about things, it's, it's for a future date. Look at verse 11 of Daniel 12. It says, And from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, and the abomination that maketh desolate set up, there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. Got another number here. What number is that? Well, we know... When it's going to end, we go back. That's not good number wise there. 1,290 days. And something happens there. And I think what it says is says, and from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, and the abomination that maketh desolate set up. See, the sacrifice began here, but there's a time in which. Sacrifice is going to end. And then the abomination is set up. We know when the abomination is set up, right? So that means 30 days before days before the middle of tribulation, he stops the sacrifice. They're creating the image. 30 days later, he presents his image in that temple. And there's no more sacrifice because now he's the one to be worshipped. And from the time that that sacrifice ends till the time Jesus Christ comes back, 1,290 days. Now, if I'm putting those things together, now we know when it starts, when it ends, when the idol is set up in the temple. One more thing, and this is, the most, this is, this is more interesting than the rest. Verse 12 says, Blessed is he that waiteth, and cometh to the thousand three hundred and five and thirty days. <laughs> but go thy way till the end be, and thou shalt rest and stand in thy lot at the end of the days. We're not out of time, let me tell you. <laughs> uh, I need another color here. Now we got, what's that last time? Uh, let's see. One thousand three hundred thirty-five days. Now he just got done talking about the one thousand two hundred ninety days till from this point to here, but then he says, "Blessed is he that waited to the one thousand three hundred thirty-five." He actually added forty more days, didn't he? I keep putting years. And when he said, blessed is he that waiteth, waiteth means, uh, when you read Revelation 20, verse 6, blessed is he uh, that hath part in the first resurrection, on such the second death hath no power. Jesus Christ is going to come back, there's going to be a resurrection of the dead. But it's not going to be the day he comes back, because look at, it, remember, blessed is he that waiteth and cometh to the thousand three hundred thirty and five days, five and thirty days, Right? Why is he blessed? Look at verse 13. Now God's telling Daniel, but go thy way till the end be. Well, that's the last time he, he listed anything. And thou shalt rest and stand in thy lot at the end of days. At the, at that one th at the, the 1,335th day, Daniel is going to be raised from the dead to enter into that kingdom. 
Daniel, you're not going to see all this stuff take place. It's a sealed book. It's for the time of the end. But don't worry, Daniel, you're going to die. You're going to rest until the end of the days. And at the end of the days, you're going to stand in your lot. Forty days after the second coming of Jesus Christ is when the resurrection of the Old, Sa- Old Testament saints are going to take place. It doesn't happen the day he comes back. It's 40 days later. So there's a lot of things that are going to take place. And the Bible, Bible prophecy, it's got all kinds of numbers for you to scratch your head and figure out and ponder. Uh, but the, the one that's clearest is that one for me. Is Sometimes we think the Lord comes back and Israel comes back to the land. They're gathered back. The resurrection takes place like, as if everything takes place and just like that. No, that things take place, he's, going to, he's got to be inaugurated, he's going to be crowned king. There's going to be a whole lot of things that are going to take place uh, when Jesus Christ comes back. And on that, that, that end of days is when Daniel is going to stand in his lot, receive his inheritance, and be resurrected from the dead. All that just to say, when they see the abomination, <laughs> that one is the easy one to figure out. Right in the middle of that 70th week, we'll pick up in in uh, Mark and leave Daniel behind for a little while anyhow next week. Let's pray. Our God and our Father, we thank you for the opportunity to study your Bible and realize that uh, your Bible would take all the scrutiny, all the time, all the effort that we could ever put into it uh, to constantly be feeding us with some understanding of whether it be present days or future days or past days, uh, your plan for eternity um, that, Father, it's, it's a book of just full of truths, and we pray that we can just keep adding nuggets to our understanding and uh, realize that things do take place in a time sequence, and we thank you for the opportunity to look at these things this morning. Thank you as well that before you pour out your vengeance on this world, before it's a time like the world's never seen, uh, we're saved from all these things. We'll obtain our salvation in the rapture. Thank you for that blessed hope. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.